Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. everyone. Good morning. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I, I am very passionate about this topic. Uh, I've been in education since 95. I've worked in the higher ed world. I've worked in the secondary world. Uh, and things have changed a lot just in the past five years. Uh, and it's amazing the amount of power that folks carry in their pocket today just to these things. I don't think folks really have an understanding of what this can do. Uh, consider that there is more power in a smartphone than they took to the moon. All right, people were still using very rudimentary calculators back in the 60s, uh, and that has tremendous more power than anything they took. So it's, it's a fascinating world in, that, in, in which we're in. Uh, in addition to my kind of technology director hat I wear at Lakefield, uh, we also started a cybersecurity team this year, which Mason is a member of. So he's got some kind of advanced knowledge on some of the other things that can happen in this world. So I'm going to kind of equate things today to driver's ed. All right, let's think about it like this. Would you let your kid drive a car without going through driver's ed? Okay. So think about this this morning as driver's ed for social media with your kids. Okay. So everything you're going to see, we're going to, and I want this to be as interactive as possible. So if there's something that I say that you have no idea what I'm talking about, say, uh, back up, I don't know what you're talking about, and, and we'll fill it in. So a couple things to get familiar with. These little icons that are up here, you'll see on either your phone or your children's phones. So the little applications that can be installed, and we're just going to touch the surface today on some of the apps that are out there. Uh, Mason's got some background in these, more so than I do. I can talk about kind of the, the legal side and what can happen long term. I used to wear a college admissions hat for a while, so I can tell you some of the stuff that we used to look at. Okay, I have an application in one hand and your Facebook page in the other. Do they match? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And they, they can cause issues. All right, so we'll get familiar with each one of these icons. That one you're probably more familiar with than anything with Facebook. Um, how many people are friends with your kids on Facebook? Excellent. Okay. How many people in this room consider themselves tech savvy? Okay. How many people think their kids are tech savvy? Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I would debate that kids know about technology, uh, but may not know exactly what they have access to. And that's part of what I hope the goal is today, so that you can go home and have a conversation about that. All right. So the number one thing that I want to do today is raise awareness, but don't walk out of your paranoid. Don't go home and take the phone away. All right, that's not going to help the problem. All right, this is really about how to start that conversation. And that's where Mason's got some expertise. Uh, sometimes my, my viewpoints are seen as a little draconian, and he may have some better advice for you. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to talk about social engineering. So by raw definition, social engineering is me doing something to elicit a response from you. Right, whether it's you know, just by me talking to you and trying to get you to do something, whether it's sending you an email or a photo trying to get you to do something, and we'll look at some demos of, of how that can happen. There's a lot more of this in the news here recently uh, about making folks do things. We're going to talk about how your kids can be affected by this and some of the things. I mean, they're still kind of naive in this world of technology, and sometimes you know, that link that you clicked on has some other ramifications, and that's what we're going to say. The fun part, we're going to do a little demo and, uh, and see what's out there. Again, don't be paranoid when I show you some of this stuff. All right, everything is 100% publicly available. We're not going to hack. We're not going to write code. Uh, I'm not going to take you into the backdoor settings of the phone. All right, this is all very surfacy uh, that you can go home, you can talk about, and you can actually see and do. And then we're going to talk about protection, what you can do in addition to that conversation, what you can do with those apps on the phone, and it's, it's all going to be a personal family decision. Some folks treat this stuff very differently. Some are 100% okay with some of the things their children are doing. Some people aren't. And you know what? That's okay. It's a family decision. All right. This is one of my favorite, favorite quotes. All right. Who needs the NSA when we have social media? Right. And how true is that? All right, and I mean no disrespect to Mason when I say this, but there have been plenty of disciplinary issues at Loyola where I didn't have to ask anybody anything. I looked at their open Facebook page or their open Twitter page and knew everything that happened. All right, our Dean of Discipline loves those reports that we send up to him uh, on, well, I didn't know anything about it, but here you go. We, we found it all. Uh, and that's a reality, and that's where 
you know, again, put my college admissions hat on, that's where some of the problems can come in, especially in junior and senior year. And so, folks that are friends with your kids on Facebook, I applaud you. Uh, that is one of the methods that you can use to kind of keep track. You're not spying. You want to be part of that environment. Okay. So this, this is my term. All right. I'm calling the Web 3.0 world, the world that we're in today, the social media revolution. All right. I can't think of another point in time when children have had access to so much information uh, and can contribute content to the web for everyone to see. They never, never in history has that happened. I go back to my college days. I spent lots and lots and lots of time in the library doing research. I didn't have Wikipedia. Right. Kids can do a search, a Google search now, and, and replicate what took me three weeks to do in about 30 minutes. Right. And then they can contribute. That content they've created, they're contributing through Facebook and Twitter and some of the other social sites that are out there. Right. That's, that's a whole new world. Right. It's, and that's still, I think, a lot of people are having a hard time wrapping their head around what that actually means. And the kids do. I mean, that's information overload. I mean, they wake up in the morning, and you can talk about how you do this. They kind of wake up in the morning, I see lots of kids on Facebook, they have to catch up with what happened the night before. You know, the gossip worked a lot different when I was in high school. Uh, it was the school bus, uh, it was my younger sister. Uh, I never got to talk on the phone because she had the cords stretched in her room with the door shut, and I never talked with my friends. Uh, very, very different world. Everyone has that instant communication. You're going to walk out with some buzzwords. All right, you can walk out with some coffee table trivia. We're going to talk about OSINT, which is open source intelligence, which is a very fancy word for searching the web. Okay. So if you had to guess, what are the two favorite sources for intelligence on the web? If you're looking for something on the web, where do you normally go? Google's one. How about another one? Bing, absolutely. So we're going to talk about data mining out of both of those tools. These are fascinating tools when you actually look at how they work. They're all algorithm based and they will find anything in you know, milliseconds. They'll find exactly pretty much what you're looking for. That's taking years of perfection. So again, look at history. We have plenty of points in history where tools have been created for good and people found a way to use them for some not so good purposes. We're not, this is the exact same thing we're going to apply. Google and Bing are great tools when you're looking for legitimate information, but they also categorize and look for and present things that maybe aren't so good to. So we spend some time kind of talking about you know, the buzzword right now is digital citizenship and how to interpret information, how to process information. Uh, you know, some days I'm a little naive where I think you know when the kids are in my four walls in the school, I do a relatively good job of protecting them from content that they probably shouldn't see until they reach in their pocket and pull this out. Okay. I, I can't manage this. There is no management platform for you as a parent to install on this device to know what your kid's doing. It doesn't exist. All right. Any of the entrepreneurs in the group, if you come up with that, cut me in at 50%. <laughs> but that, that's the reality. So the, the education is what's the most important part so that you know what's happening because there's not a magic app to install on the phone. There are some companies that advertise some apps to install. The kids know how to get around them in 30 seconds. Okay, so that's not, it might make you feel better, but it's not helpful. Okay. The, the power of that conversation, that's what Mason's going to talk about some of the stuff on how to start that. So quick poll. How many people use any of these apps? Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat? Okay, excellent. Right, so we're going to have some background. Uh, some of these are some lesser known, <coughs> but we'll still talk about. Uh, I understand in this area, you guys are kind of uh, an Instagram, Snapchat type area, okay? and, and it's weird. Different areas of the county or different areas of the state, you'll find different apps in use, and these change every day. All right, once, once it's not cool anymore, somebody writes something else. So what I talk about today, maybe I'll date it tomorrow when the next app hits the market. But if you know kind of how they work, they all basically kind of do the same thing. Um, how they work and what is out there is the important part to walk away. How do people carry a smartphone? <coughs> Alright, put everybody in the room. Now what about your kids? Do they have smartphones as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, for the most part. I have one freshman at Loyola out of 196 kids that still has a flip phone. <laughs> everybody else has a smartphone. 
All right. <laughs> not long. The next upgrade? Yeah, it's not happening. They're on all small ones. Uh, okay. So let's talk about how smartphones are designed. All right. Every smartphone has a GPS chip in it for a specific reason. Who wants to guess why smartphones are GPS in it? So when you do a search, that's correct, and that's primarily used for well, <laughs> that's the secondary use for GPS now. Marketing. Marketing is another thing that's turned into a secondary use. Location. For tracking. Tracking. Location. So the, the, the entire reason GPS were put into phones was for E911. All right, so in history, as folks moved away from landlines in their house, when you called 911 from a landline in your home, the address popped up on the operator's screen. So if you were incapacitated and there was a problem and you dialed and just sat on the phone, they knew to come and they knew right where to go. As folks started moving away from landlines and cell phones became more popular, E911 didn't exist for a while. So they didn't know where you were. They could kind of triangulate you within you know, a mile radius, but that's not helpful if you're a right? So they put GPS chips in for that purpose. So the secondary market that's come out of that is marketing and being able to search for pizza parlors and using your phone as a navigational tool, all right? That's opened up a whole new world. You're, you're carrying a tracking device on these things that can be used for a lot of different purposes. There are lots of companies out there now that will buy that data from your cell carrier for marketing. So they know your route in the morning, they know you're at Starbucks in the morning, they know you're a Target, maybe you did some price comparison and went to Walmart and Baltimore. That's, that's all data that they buy and sell, whether or not or you know it, the cell carrier is doing that. Uh, but they were originally done uh, to do that, to, to forward in on them. So the thing to keep in mind, everything I show you from now on is you can go home and do this tonight. All right, I do this presentation for our freshmen uh, as they come into the school. And the thing I put at the bottom here is, now remember we have an acceptable use policy, you're not going to go home and do this for that. Uh, Mason's laughing because he's probably heard this presentation 50 times now. Uh, very interesting conversation. This might be something I, I recommend you, you have at the dinner table. When I talk to a freshman, when I talk to a senior, their idea of what is private is very different. The younger kids seem to not have any concept of privacy. They don't care that they share deep, dark secrets with 700 million people on Facebook. Uh, they don't care some of the family stuff that they share. I mean, there's some pretty private things that kids will share on Facebook uh, or on Twitter, and it's very, very public. Uh, and we'll ask them, would you tell an adult? No. Okay, well, here's what I know. How do you know that? You hacked my account. No, no, I didn't. You put it on Facebook. You hacked my Facebook account. No, it's public. They don't have a concept of privacy. Control. If you think you're controlling data and you're keeping your data private, not happening in this world. Okay? Be very, very conscious of the data you put there. Most folks in this room probably know property database is 100% public. Court records are 100% public. Right? I can pretty much do a background check on anybody with their first and last name. Right? And that's just the public records that are available. Once you kind of add on what people share, People share some really crazy stuff, uh, you know, whether it's complaining about their employer to, you know, we've seen everything from abuse to drugs to alcohol, the whole nine yards. It's alcohol. Okay. So privacy and control is very different in this world. Do uh, you want to add anything to that? Because you, we had this conversation a couple of times with, with guys in the club. Right. Yeah, I think as you get older, you start to understand the ramifications of everything that you can do with the phone. And I mean, this just became a big thing with little smartphones when I was in middle school. So as it's kind of progressed, kids have started to realize, oh, my friend just got kicked out of school for having pictures of naked girls or talking about selling drugs and no one gets taken away and you're out of school. So I think the immaturity level kind of messes with that. All right. When you install an app on your phone, anybody ever seen the screen? It's 
says, can I use your location data? Okay. Anybody know what you're saying yes to? Okay. So here's, I, here, here's my little tagline. If I had a bumper sticker to put on my car, I would say we are in the next, next, next finish generation. Which is when you're installing an app, yeah, I don't care, next, 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 finish, it's on. <laughs> Nobody reads this crap, okay? I'm probably one of the few people that do, all right? I, I have an interest in this. I want to know what you want from me. All right, this is asking, we're going to use your GPS data. Why? If I'm installing, and, and here's, here's the prime one. So the two biggest folks in the market are Apple with the iPhone and their app and their uh, iTunes store. And then the Android marketplace and Google Play, which is where apps are available. Millions and millions and millions of apps. I'm going to pick them on the Android OS for a minute. They have a, an app in there, the flashlight app. How many people have the flashlight app on your phone? Okay. Depending on which one you downloaded, and I know everybody's going to check this when they go home. Depending on which one you downloaded, sometimes there, there was a very, very bad one that was in the, uh, the Google Store for a while. When you downloaded it, it said, okay, we're going to install the flashlight app. We want access to your memory card, your GPS data, your address book, and people just went next, 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 finish. And I had a flashlight, I could see in the dark. <laughs> but you, you told them it was okay to use your GPS data to look at your address book and to look at data on your phone. It was a piece of malware. All right, but next, 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 finish. Who was that one by? Uh, <laughs> you know what, I, I think it is out of the App Store now. Okay. I'm not sure which, which one exactly it was, but it's been recently removed. Okay. But that happens every day. So, you know, I don't want to get in my soapbox for, yeah. for your favorite carrier. Yeah, right. uh, Apple does a much better job of vetting applications. Google was, the whole Android operating system was put out there as more of the open source market where people can design. It's, it's just more kind of free. Both of them are very, very viable. I like both of them. I tend to lean more kind of towards the Android market because a lot more people can create apps. But Apple is much better at looking for bad applications that try to do some of this stuff. But they're not immune. Right? Any platform is susceptible to this. The big thing is read. All right. If there is an application that is a flashlight, there is no reason it needs access to your GPS data. Okay, that's interesting. Did my laptop go to sleep? Okay. Uh, so just be careful and read that. Don't don't do the next 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 finish. Actually read it. Okay. We're trying to get more of our kids to read this stuff. To at least at the surface, okay, it wants GPS. <coughs> Should that app have access to GPS data? You guys are going to walk out here, you may already have it, a handout that shows how to enable or disable GPS data on both the Apple platform and the Android platform. It's at the back of your packet. Okay. So you'll know how to go in and how to look for an app that's using GPS data. And you can make the decision if you want to or not. You cannot disable E911. That is there by law. All right. Who can tell me about Instagram? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you know about Instagram. Okay, story of their life. Every second. Every second. <laughs> yeah. Sharing pictures. Yes, so it, it's a picture sharing platform. Now, how many people know that Facebook bought Instagram last year? For a billion dollars. That's with a B. All right. So we talk about, let's, let's talk about privacy and control for a minute. You're using a free service. Right. There should be no expectation, if you're not paying for something, that you have any rights. When you take a photo and you put it up there, you don't own it. It's a free service. So some folks have filed lawsuits and, you know, you're invading my privacy. No, it's a free service. You have no rights. Okay. But Facebook knows, hey, it's, it's worth the money. They pay a lot of money to buy. It's used on mobile devices, primarily. Primarily phones, Android, iPhones and some of the newer tablets. It's not really a PC application. So again, this generation is that whole mobile generation. Uh, <clears throat> that's where it's primarily used. All photos that are put up there are public. If you put a hashtag on them, they're searchable. Okay? And they're there. I mean, we're talking forever at this point. And once they're there, you can make a case to get rid of them, but they're pretty much there. Okay? Can I ask about, yes, does Instagram have a setting? And maybe what you just said is, it undoes that. Does it have a set, a privacy setting? It does. It okay. does. So but it still does not mean it's private. It's that is correct. Private. That is correct. So by default, we talked about that GPS data, right? 
your camera on all your phones is GPS enabled. So when you take a photo, it stamps the coordinates on the photo. So when you upload it, I can pinpoint you on a map. Right. It was created for people that do kind of geo-tracking, and if you have a, you know, college kids love it when they're on you know, study abroad, their parents can, oh, you were at the Great Wall of China, and then you went here, and then you went here. They can track that whole journey. Really cool that you can do that. Scares the heck out of me because it's public and people know right where I am. So again, personal decision. Now, Instagram has implemented a feature that will strip out that GPS data. They also have a feature where you can mark a photo private, but at the surface it's private, but there's still ways to get to it. Okay. The other issue that I've seen, uh, you know, one of the other things, when you create an account, it pretty much says you're supposed to use your real name. You're supposed to be over 13. Uh, no one's ever going to prosecute you if you create a fake account. But the issue we've seen is kids creating fake accounts and using it for cyberbullying. Whether they're taking photos that you didn't know, or taking a photo off your phone, or photoshopping. I mean, kids are pretty savvy when it comes to altering photos. I mean, that's, they can do some pretty derogatory things. And once it's posted, it's hard to get it in. Right. If it's posted under a fake account, it's even harder to try and get some of that information back. Law enforcement is overwhelmed with requests like this. All right. So if you're expecting a quick fix, sometimes it doesn't come. Right. Instagram, I think the last time I checked, only had 13 employees. It's a relatively small operation. Uh, they've implemented some things called flash code filters, and I'm sure you can figure out what they look for to try and pull down some of the, the naughty pictures that are out there. But then, then it turns into a, a freedom of speech issue, then it turns into someone taking artistic photos, you took down my art. It's a mess. So it's, do we take everything down, or do we take nothing down? I mean, there, and there's only 13. Can't they use the IP addresses to find people, or do they just not bother? Well, if you're in a Starbucks using public Wi-Fi and you post a picture and walk out, very difficult to trace. Got it. Very difficult. Okay. In addition to Instagram, and, and I'm going to try and, and blend some things together, and link some things together. Uh, a lot of folks you see on Instagram will also use a product called Kick. Right. Have any, has anybody seen this little icon on, on phones? Okay. Kick, is, kick honestly scares me, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. Uh, if you've ever tried to prevent your child, for whatever reason, from sending text messages, you called the, your carrier and said, I don't want text messaging on this phone, take it off. So they turn it off. Kick is an application that uses your phone's data plan. It's a text messaging platform. It's a video sharing platform. It's a picture sharing platform. All right, real time. I can fire it up and have a video chat with Mason back at Blakefield. Uh, I can send him text messages via that platform, even though you try to turn it off. Uh, and it runs on every mobile platform, from Blackberries to Androids to iPhones. Right? It uses the data plan. It's untraceable. There's no law of what's happening. Right? So this is one of those apps that, if you see it on the phone, it's conversation time. There's, you know, everyone goes by an alias on this service. You have no idea, I mean, if you're talking to friends, you know. But you have no idea sometimes who you're talking to. This kind of, I get a little nervous with younger kids, because uh, it's not too hard. It's kind of like if you ever use Skype, or if you ever use some of the other video chatting apps that are out there, everyone just kind of shows up and you pick somebody to chat with. Have you heard of anyone called Anonymous? No. I haven't, have you? Or the, the group or an application? Because there's a, there's a group of activists called Anonymous. I'm not, you know that one? I'm not familiar with what she's talking about. The group? Okay. And that, that may be. So Anonymous is this big kind of activist community. They're the ones that, that try to take down the Department of Justice website. They took down Westboro Baptist. Uh, they've gone after different hate groups. They've, you know, they're an interesting group. Sometimes they're on the side of good and sometimes they're not. It may be an app. There may be one that's come out, absolutely. Now this one kind of acts as an anonymous app. Yes, it sounds like because once the app starts, you're, you're not really able to go back in time and look. You can't call the cell carrier and say, can you give me my chat history? They don't have it. Yes, ma'am? I think um, as far as this relates, or from my experience as this <coughs> relates to students, what this does is it allows them to create an anonymous account and completely bypass you. So they can, con they can uh, communicate back and forth, and you, if they're being forthcoming, they they're clear about who they are, but they can also create an anonymous account. 
And you, thinking that you've you know, called the company, shut down the text message, or looking at the phone, you, there's no evidence of this. Correct. Correct. And then there's another one, and it's text me, that you can actually mm -hmm. have a telephone number associated with it. Yes. And you can call and leave voice mess messages. Yes. And it's not traceable. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yes, uh, a text me is very common. The reason that I included Kick in here, and, and there's a couple couple of things I'm going to show you, but keep that in mind. All right, remember I said everything is publicly accessible. This is, and you have the links for this in your resource packet. Instagram has a live feed. Right? You can go to the live feed and see every Instagram photo that's being posted real time. I'm going to warn you, you're going to see some things you don't want to see, okay? But it, it makes it more relevant to what's actually happening. Right, now I'm going to put, and forgive me, this is where sometimes people think I'm creepy. Some, some faculty won't eat lunch with me after I do the presentation. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay? Um, put, put, on, put on a, I'm going to try and put on a bad person out here for a minute. This is a public feed. I just did a quick snapshot. Let's look at some of the stuff that, that came up. All right, I've got somebody who said headphones. I've got a, a little uh, chat snapshot here. Young child, group of friends, dog. Uh, on an airplane and group of friends. If, if I'm a bad person trying to start a conversation with a younger person, what do younger people normally take pictures of? Themselves, dogs, stuff around the house, the bird, you know. It's usually pretty easy to figure out the age of a person by the photos that they're taking. When you click on, you know, the little Instagram deal, it will tell you who took the photo. If the GPS data is in the photo, you can put that into a web browser and pinpoint it on the app from the GPS data. Right. There is a lot of information you can get just from a photo. Right. I was a psych minor in college, so that's where I get some of this stuff. Um, kids are pretty predictable in what they do and what they take photos of. So if you're a bad person looking to start a conversation with a minor, there's easy ways to do that. This is even if you have your private users. Yeah. The photos still roll through. Wow. Might be harder to get the username, but it's there's still ways to do it. Bad people can still get it. I mean, all of these services were created as public sharing apps, so they were they are completely against making things private. That's not what they were created to do. Their theory is if you want a private sharing app, send a photo or text it to them. You're you know you're asking us to make something private that we created to be public. It, it's a real really weird balancing act right now. So this is a live feed. There's, there's two links that you have. One is the actual live feed, and one is a nice tool that somebody wrote that you can put in a username, if you know the username, and get all the photos from that user. Okay. Now, let me show you some of the fun photos I found in 10 minutes. And it didn't show up as good in the, uh, on the slide as it does on the screen. This is a guy, he's in Brazil, he took a photo of his passport. Oh, and share on Instagram. Can anyone say identity theft? Okay. Kids will take pictures of their IDs, of their licenses, and post them. Now you've got full name, address, you've got everything. Okay. Again, we talk about the conversation at home. This is some of the conversation. We're raising awareness, not in your annoyance. Don't go home and take the phone away, okay? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> this is driver's ad for social media, right? All right. Now, here's where it gets a little uncomfortable. These are the photos that I can show you. Uh, these two young men, in this case, um, you know, have names. But the other thing I want to point out is they both have kick user IDs. I've seen a lot of teenagers <clears throat> that have Instagram photos that also have kick. And typically, the photos are the, this is a really bad word to use, enticer to start the video chat. There are lots of kids that are putting themselves out there, they look at me, and then you can use your imagination where it goes from there. And, and Mary can, uh, you know, when we were talking about the best way to present this, there were lots of other photos here that are a lot more revealing than this that I didn't feel comfortable showing. Okay? If your kids are using Instagram and they're using Kick, check it out. Yes, ma'am. I'm just a little, I'm a little confused. This is all new to me. Sure. Um, so they, these kids post, how does this Instagram, they, they just put pictures up and then? 
So how Instagram. Do you create? It's just because, like, Michael Class is not his real name, probably. Uh, you'd be surprised. I, I, that's actually pretty close to his, his real name. He's got a Facebook page linked to this. So Instagram is owned by, by Facebook. All right. So when you take you install the Instagram app on your phone, when you take a photo, it posts it up. Okay. So right Instagram is an app. It is an app. That is okay. correct. You can link it to your Facebook account. You can link it to your Twitter account, and then it just starts kind of propagating from there. Some folks, a lot of folks, use their real name on on there because it's linked to your Facebook page, Got right? It. Okay. So it'll come up with your real name. Thank you. Okay. Now his handle on on his kick, Sexy Man One Hundred Four. I don't think that's his real name, but <laughs> that's who he is. <laughs> Again, this is a, this is a whole new world for me too when it comes to some of this stuff. Um, but the, the link, you know, the, what the takeaway for this is make the link between what what is being shared. Okay, so if you see Facebook, you see Instagram, you see Kit, it could be very innocent. However, yes, ma'am. Uh, you just said something that this was going to kind of get off uh, in a different direction. But there are a lot of websites now that say sign in with your Facebook account. Yes. Do you not recommend that? I don't, and, and here's why. Last, actually two days ago, if anyone saw the uh, Twitter had 250,000 accounts get hacked, and specifically they were accounts that folks had linked to their American Express card. So American Express gives you the ability to, instead of creating an account with them, to use your Twitter account. They were compromised. Right? So that, in turn, compromised everyone's American Express account. I do not recommend linking accounts for the simple reason and, and this is a whole another hour presentation on password management, but a lot of folks tend to use the same username and password for accounts. When you start linking accounts, once one is compromised, they've all been compromised. Okay? So it's, it's, again, it's a personal decision on how you manage your online life. Okay? So the, the takeaway from this is, if you see these apps, have a conversation. If you wanted to go and research this, mm -hmm. I don't have this app. I don't mm -hmm. have Kick or would it be better to go home and do it on a towel, on a PC, or on your iPhone? Instagram doesn't have an app for a PC. It's mobile only. And do I have to download you can, it? You can look at the photos now, That's because that's how I got these. Yeah, you can actually do it You can see it. To participate, though, you need a phone. So if you want to upload photos and kind of see how that process works, correct. Correct. But yeah, so the... The links here are all PC based, so you can go home and you can look at the live feed. You can check out usernames if you have to know your Correct. Correct. Is Kick, um, do you have followers on Kick? Or yes. Do you, do you identify who is in your group? It's public, so you can search, but you can have followers and you can see who's following you. Okay. It's, it's a whole new world, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. I guess the challenge for Kick is, um, I follow my kids not to post and that's why education is key. I mean, it, there, there is no way to fix the problem without turning the internet off. And we all know that is not going to happen. So the education is the key. It's the whole key to, to uh, identity. This is another one that you're going to see, Snapchat. How many folks have seen this on the phone? Okay. This is one that, that I'm going to put my, my shrink out on here for a minute. All right. This one has gotten extremely popular. Mason's got some words on this as well. But here is my favorite quote. All right. It appears possible that teenagers are more likely using the app to safely, <laughs> I think so, explore the sort of silly, unguarded, and sometimes unwise ideas that have always occupied a teenage brain in a manner that won't haunt them Forever, I disagree. In other words, they're chatting with Snapchat for silent because it's not like chatting on Facebook. All right, here's reality. Okay, Snapchat is an app. Again, it's photo sharing. Its entire intent was that I could take a photo, send it to you, and it self-destructs in 10 seconds after you look at it. All right, now put that in the hands of a teenager. Uh, some of the photos, eh, uh, okay. Uh, I would turn red, okay? So, they're under the impression that they self-destruct in 10 seconds. That doesn't happen. If you're at all tech savvy, like your kids, it's very easy to get those photos. Right? So when I see safely 
won't haunt them. Absolutely incorrect. Don't walk out of here thinking it's safe. Anything that goes online is online. Okay? It's not safe. It's not private. We go back to the whole privacy and control conversation with the kids. They read that and they're like, oh, it self-destructs in 10 seconds. It doesn't happen. I've seen time after time after time, and, and unfortunately it tends to be young ladies that will send very interesting photos to you know, male counterparts, and it, it just gets out of hand from there. Okay? So Mason's actually played with Snapchat and can kind of give you the reality, come up here, can give you the reality of, of how easy it is to grab this. Um, just within the past couple months, a school local to us um, had a problem with Snapchat where an eighth grader girl took a picture of herself nude and sent it to a senior at the same school, thinking, oh, well, it's going to be gone in three or ten seconds, however long you sent it to them for. The boy was able to take a screenshot of his phone when the picture came up saved it and sent it out to a bunch of friends. Um, now, close to 10 kids have gotten kicked out, the girl got suspended, and I think it's slowly starting to spread to the other schools because some of the other kids have gotten a little bit of it. But I just as kind of a test, had my girlfriend send me Snapchat pictures so that I could try and screenshot it. And Snapchat is designed <coughs> so that if you do try and screenshot the picture, it closes out and you have to reopen it. But it doesn't react fast enough to how fast you can click a screenshot. So I had, I think she sent me like four pictures and I was able to get three or four pictures of each one. It's not hard. It's not hard. So, you know, if, you're, if your child tells you Snapchat's safe because the picture's deleted, it's not, it's still there. All right, forensics, you know, data forensics is huge right now. It's, it's an up and coming field. It's not hard to jump into any of these phones. The data's still on the phone, all right? Unless it's overwritten with a bunch of ones and zeros with military grade software, it's still recoverable. All right, so if, if you're tech savvy and these applications are free on the internet to, to go after the file systems on these phones, I can pull up all the photos. Okay, even if they were deleted, they, they're not, okay, they're not. Okay. Um, I'm going to give it a little time. I want to make sure we'll be plenty of time for questions. You work All right. How many folks use Twitter? Okay. How many of your kids use Twitter? You know. Okay. A lot. <coughs> Twitter is another one of these social tools that, again, was created for the best of intentions. Then it turned into people telling me what they had for breakfast and dinner. And <laughs> stuck in traffic. And I don't care. All right. Um, I don't. But it, it was. It was created for good. People have kind of taken it to the next level. So again, remember, all of these things can be linked. Facebook can be linked to Twitter, can be linked to Instagram, can be linked to Snapchat, and we're all sharing, and everybody's happy, and the internet's great. That's what it was designed to do. But some other folks have kind of jumped in, and this is where I get passionate about this, because as minors, they're naive. They don't know what they're doing, and they're innocent, and they should stay that way. All right, it's the other folks on the other side of the screen that we don't know who they are. That's the people that I get concerned about. Uh, and that's the whole reason I do this kind of stuff is to help raise that awareness. Okay. Before I before I reveal that, because this was just in the news in January. What happens to a tweet when you send a tweet? What happens to it? When you share, I'm at Starbucks. Stays there where? For how long? I haven't read it. Ah. Spoiler alert, right? All right. So. <laughs> Twitter's public. Every tweet from 2006 is stored in the Library of Congress. Okay? The, the government has decided, and here, here's the part that, that I tell our freshmen, because I had to explain what the Library of Congress was. Most of them. <laughs> the government feels that this generation's mark is coming in the form of digital stuff. They feel it necessary to capture and record this. This is their mark on history. All right, how scary is that? Okay. Um, every tweet is stored in the Library of Congress, and it is searchable. Okay. You can go to the Library of Congress. There's a terminal somewhere. I've never been there to do it, but it's there, and you can search tweets. If 
you know the person's name, their hashtag, their whatever, you can go looking for it. Right? This can come back to haunt you. This is admissible in a court of law, okay? Because now the Library of Congress has deemed it <coughs> necessary. This can be used against you. As can Facebook, as can text messages. You know, if anybody's watched Judge Judy, she loves reading text messages, right? So it's all admissible in court. <coughs> There are companies that are making millions on data analysis, data forensics, to produce this type of information in court. It's here to stay. That's their mark. What I do for our freshmen, I say in four years, I'm going to put my college admissions hat on, and I'm going to look at how did you conduct your online life compared to how you're presenting yourself to the college. There is a movement towards digital resumes, kind of a digital persona, uh, the e-portfolio, it's got lots of names, but that's where a lot of this stuff is moving I saw a hand. Um, you say every public tweet, I mean, are all tweets public? All, all tweets are public. Okay. All right, so well, there, you can mark your account private. Right. If you're conversing with someone else that has an open account, I can still see your private conversation. <laughs> <laughs>
The thing with Twitter, uh, since it's all 100% open, I can click on that person and pull all of that person's tweets. Okay, so this is very similar to the, the what you were talking about. All right. Um, I, I know this isn't very clear on here, but I can kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, she's quoting scripture. Uh, she's quoting a couple of different uh, things from Proverbs. Uh, and obviously, she's you know, very passionate about her eating child. Okay. Pretty innocent girl. Not knowing when she installed Twitter. Yes, ma'am. What was your search criteria? How, how did you use it? I was just looking at tweets in the Maryland area. And I happened to see a photo and clicked on it. Okay. So I, I, had no, I had no criteria. It was okay. showing me everything. I was everything. looking at four tweets and that's your search criteria. When I clicked on her photo, it's, it's searching her name. So I'm actually looking at her name. I've only singled out her tweets. <laughs> <coughs> By having that GPS data turned on, all right, I've established a route. She's tweeted from three places, all, right, all along the I-81 corridor in Virginia. Okay. I, can, I can pretty much track her. All right. I can establish a pattern. All right. Not hard to do. All publicly accessible. Right. So we go back to the quote, who needs the NSA when you have social media? Okay. All right. Here's where it gets a little worse. She has a wide open Facebook page, no privacy settings enabled. So I just did a Facebook search. So this time I specifically searched her name in Facebook. Got this. Wide open. All right. Full name, first, middle, last, where she works, her full birth date, where she went to school, where she lives, and where she's from. Right. At this point, I have just about 98% of what I need to apply for a loan in her name. Okay. Again, 100% publicly open, no privacy controls in I gave you a link in your resources for how to lock down your Facebook page. So you can't do this. Okay? So check your Facebook page, check your kids' Facebook page to make sure it's locked down. Other things I can glean from this, I know when she graduated college, I know all of her friends, I know her likes, I know what movies she likes. There's a lot of information I can get out of this. So if, if I want to be a little more kind of deviant, I did a search for uh, Bronze Star Optical, which is where she told me she worked for her Facebook page. Uh, and those two points on the map should look very familiar because she was tweeting from work. All right. Um, this one is where, so this is her house in Inwood, West Virginia. She was tweeting from home. And I thought I had one more. Uh, I know what it is. So keep in mind, again, give me everything I know. So when I show you the next thing, it'll make sense. Photos, so that photo so that, that she posted of her and her child. Photos are very similar to the tweet, where they stick around forever. And since Twitter is wide open, someone was nice enough to write an application similar to Instagram that collects and displays all the, the photos. It's a little application called PicFob. I caution you about going to this website because of some of the things you may see. All right, as most folks know, 70% of the internet is pornography, and that's what you see through this feed, unfortunately. Uh, so just be aware uh, that it's there. So we talked about search criteria. My search criteria for, for this was daycare. All right. Here's what came back. We had the cute doggy daycare, right? So that's, that's the fun part. Most of these photos are folks that have either dropped their kids off at daycare, or this the daycare facility tweeting out photos of what your kid's doing while they're there. Again, a, a tool that was supposed to be really innocent and used for cool things, if you're a bad guy on the other end, you've got lots of information to use. So let me relate this back to our, our young lady who shared a lot of information on Facebook, had a picture of her kid, I knew her full name, her birthday. I probably could walk into the daycare center and pick up her kid. I knew all her friends. Oh, you know, her, her friend Sally that she graduated with, and we go way back. And if, if you're a good conniver, you can probably pick them up. So again, it's all about being conscious of what you are sharing. Privacy control throughout the window. It doesn't exist. It starts with what you share, and it starts with having that chat with the kid about what they're sharing. Okay? So don't be paranoid. Remember I told you at the beginning, don't be paranoid. I'm starting to see paranoid looks. Okay? <laughs> So, that, that brings us to what can you do? Okay. What can you do? Be 100% aware of what's happening. Okay. Again, it is a family decision how this works. It's a family decision on how that conversation starts. 
but have it. Okay? Know the applications on the phone. So I showed you you've got copies of the icons. You know what some of them look like. I've only shown you a few. There are many, many more out there that I don't know. I haven't heard of yet. Mason may not even heard of them yet. But they're out there. If you see an icon you don't know, Google it. Look it up. See what it does. Is it just the communication icons or all apps, game, or game apps and things like that? There are, well, that, that's, that's an interesting question. There are some game apps that have components of video and components of chat. That, you know, I would say know what's on the phone, period. Because there, I mean, there's also financial implications. Some of these games cost money. Uh, so if they're charging things up or you know, buying goods in the game, sometimes it translates into real dollars. Yeah, we had that problem with my three, third grader last year. Okay. She was playing on my phone and bought so it's a free game. Yeah, well, not, nothing in life is free, right? So yeah, they'll, they'll find a way. So it's, it, again, it's important to know what's on the phone, not just the communication apps, but all apps. But he has so many. I mean, all those little games. How do we as parents? Well, that, that's the challenge. And maybe do you want to kind of, maybe this is a good place for you to, to jump in. No pressure. No pressure or anything. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure every household has problems with that. You know, you set up an Apple account with a wide open credit card and here you go, here's a phone, go nuts. And then all of a sudden your kid's charging up $100 worth of apps and everything else you can buy with an app because the second you download a free app, oh, you buy some tokens so that you can do more on the app or something. <laughs> so I think a smart idea would be not to link the account straight to one of your credit cards, maybe use it on something that has a limit or something that doesn't really have anything on is there a way to find out if the game is, because most, most of the games are free on kids' phones. Is there a way to find out if, the phone is, if that game is linked to any of this? You can set restrictions up? on, right? I mean, that's what I've done, and I don't know if there's, is there a way around that? But I've got where I've had my kids putting a restriction on, I put a password on it, because we had a similar situation. Tokens cost money, all of a sudden there's a $500 thing. And now there's only a gift card, not a credit card associated with it. So it's what they've paid for. Right, and that's in the they, iTunes store probably? That, yeah, no, but if they put a $20 gift card or something, or, or it's their money. And that's a good solution for iTunes. So right. again, you have you have different phone platforms right. between iTunes or in right. the iPhone and the Android. Gift cards are, are a very suggestible thing because it's not linked to an actual credit card. Mm -hmm. To your question about if it's linked to other apps and other things on the phone, there's no magic bullet to, to kind of decipher that. And there's no real management platform for the phone to, to attack that. It's Googling the games, what do they do? Does this also work on the iPod Touch? Right? Same operating system, yeah. yeah. So again, any mobile device, yeah. Karen? Um, Steve, we are running a little short on okay. time. So right. what I we, we are coming down the home stretch. So I want to do it to give Mason a chance to share. Absolutely. So let me go through here real quick. The, the two things that I want to hit is the skepticism. You know, please don't be paranoid. Please don't go home and take the phone away. And, and education is key. Remember we started this as driver's ed for social media. All right, so hopefully you all walk out of here with keys for this. But know what's happening. Just know. So Mason's got some info on, you know, no pressure on this or anything, on how, how to start that conversation. So I don't want to steal any ear thunder, I'll just let him talk. But I think I think he's a unique case in how his family deals with this uh, and their conversations. That's all I'll let you know. So in my household we've always had a really open relationship with my parents. We've always communicated about everything that we were going out or who we're hanging out with. And I think that's really important to have that kind of relationship. Um, but if you don't and are trying to kind of monitor what your kids are doing. I don't think it's a good idea to be snooping around and spying on your kids. Because the second you find something that you're unhappy with that they posted, you're going to go straight to them and say, hey, why are you posting this? Why are you saying this on Facebook or Twitter? And they're going to be like, what are you stalking everything I'm doing? Why are you, how do you even know that I did that? And that's just going to form a lot more distrust between the two of you, causing them to move to getting kicked or whatever. Um, and then restriction comes in. The second you try and restrict your child from something, they're going to find a way around it. You know, with a kick, that's a fully opened messaging, picture messaging, video. I can do that with an eye touch if I have wireless connection. I don't need data on my phone. I don't even need an iPhone to do that. Or 
an Android device. The second that I have the ability to connect to wireless, I can do that. So say you restrict, restrict the wireless at your house, the second I go to a coffee shop or my friend's house, I can do the same thing. So don't think that by taking something away, it's automatically going to stop them from doing it. And every single friend of theirs has the same exact smartphone, so if you took theirs away, they're just going to use the friends. Um, I also, my friend, or my parents have been really good at keeping the boundary between being a parent and being a friend, and knowing when to be one or the other. And I know a lot of friends that have parents that don't know that boundary. A lot of the parents just want to look cool in front of their friends and make it look like, oh, like you have the sweetest parents, like I want to hang out at your house all the time because your parents can do whatever you want. But the second you start doing that, you're just going to form even more distrust between the two. And I think at that point you need to know when it's okay for me to say, no, you can't do that. And maybe we need to start looking at some passwords. So I think it, it's all about communication, being open with your child. And one of the best ways to do that is to go home tonight and say, hey, I want to download this app. I've seen a lot of my friends use it. Will you show me how to use it? Because angry children are going to be wide open to the idea of showing you how to use an app that they use every single day. It's like if they can teach you how to use something, they'll be like, oh yeah, I'll show you how to use Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So I think that's one of the best ways in following your children on those sites is best. Because if they're posting something that they don't want you to see, then they shouldn't be posting it at all. So, so now we're running, I'm sorry, I'll, if I can just close up because I know there's a couple folks and then we're going to stick around for questions. Um, I know we covered a lot. I know it's, it's a lot to take in. Uh, my email address is in, in the packet, so if you come up with other questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, I'd be happy to, to have a conversation uh, and, and fill you in. So I, I'm glad to see all the folks here. It's an important topic. Talk to other parents. In my opinion, and this is my naive opinion, the only way we're going to fix it is with education. We're not going to write software. We're not going to develop something to fix this for us. It's not happening. We got to deal with it. It's not going away. Right. Education and conversation is the key. That's that's my first. Uh, you got a quick question. Sorry. Just a quick question. <laughs> Have you um, heard of the application fee that just started? Fee. Fee. Yeah. I don't know that one yet, but <laughs> they come up so quick. That's that's the interesting part. Yeah. Check it out. Yes, ma'am. Quick question. If you link your Instagram to the Facebook, then can everything on Instagram that you thought was Right. I mean, is that the Facebook link? I didn't know about that. What yes. That? If you link your Instagram to Facebook, those photos will hit your Facebook feed. Now, so you it's can not control... just to whom you sent it. It's basically all your oh, friends yeah. on Facebook oh, yeah. now have your Instagram to your yep. whomever. Now, on Facebook, you can control certain privacy settings that are independent of Instagram uh, to try and, and okay. prevent a lot of that kind of filtering out through, through Facebook, but it's still searchable on Instagram. And thank, thank you. you all. Thank you all. Thank you all.